We have some Deshaun Watson sadness to discuss. Because, Cody, you told us off air, you're very sad after you stumbled upon some audio from Deshaun Watson's quarterback coach and Jordan Palmer, who's another one of Deshaun's coaches that he worked with in the pre-draft process, who's also the son, or the, excuse me, the brother of Carson Palmer, yeah. former NFL quarterback. Yeah, so I was listening to the Ryan Rosillo podcast while I was at Texans Fit today getting my workout on. And I was in a good mood. You know, you got the endorphins flowing. You're feeling pretty good when you're working out. And then I started listening to Quincy Avery, who's Deshaun's current personal quarterback coach, and Jordan Palmer, who Jake mentioned, helped get him ready for the NFL draft. And I was remembering the day Deshaun got drafted, I had Jordan Palmer on the radio, and I talked to Jordan Palmer, and he said, look, I'm telling you guys, this guy is different. This guy will change a franchise, and this guy needs to be in Houston. And at the time, I don't know that I really was thinking or thought that the Texans were that super interested in Deshaun. I know there were rumors, but it didn't feel like Bill O'Brien was in love with trading up to go get a quarterback. Thankfully, Rick Smith makes that decision. They trade up to go get Deshaun. And here all these years later, Deshaun's on his way out of town. There's all the -the off-the-field stuff that's changed the way we think about Deshaun. But listening to these two guys talk about Watson, I got my fan feelings. And Mm. I I just got a little... Deshaun Watson sadness, man. Yeah. So I, I, I want you guys to listen to this. Tell me if I'm appropriately sad. And then if I am appropriately sad, talk me off the sadness ledge that this took me to. Okay. All right. Well, here's first Ryan Rosillo and Quincy Avery talking about Deshaun Watson. The last thing for Quincy here. You think Deshaun plays this year, man? Yep. We've started working out, and I will say this. Deshaun is throwing the ball better than I think I've ever seen him throw football. And I'm it's not like I'm just like saying this, but he's super healthy. He's super focused. He's super locked in. When it comes to like putting on his cleats, walking on a field Sunday at one o'clock, the first time that he does that, I think that people are going to be reminded very, very quickly that Deshaun Watson is one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. And they might've forgot like his last year in Houston, when he played, he was carrying like three guys who could have been working at your local Walmart um, at the receiver position, mm. and he went absolutely berserk. If he gets on a team with any sort of talent around him, somebody's going to have to, like, really watch out. Damn. He took he went up and in on whoever the heck the 2020 receiving course, uh, court uh, was besides Brandon Cooks. Brandon Cooks, Will Fuller, <laughs> Randall Cobb. Ch- uh, Chad Hansen. I mean, he did make Chad Hans- Hansen look good that one game. He had, like, yeah. 130 receiving yards. Kiki QT. I mean, not look, the, not the league anymore. So I guess he was kind of right about that one. Chad Hansen, not the league anymore. I guess he's kind of right about that one. Brandon Cooks, though, is not going to be working at a Walmart anytime soon. I mean, Brandon Cooks, Will Fuller, Randall Cobb. That's a pretty solid top three. Yeah, yeah. I, Quincy took like a, a fairly unnecessary shot. No there. need for that. Yeah, you could no say need. the rest of the team sucked because the rest of the team did suck. You could take a shot at the offensive line. You could take a shot at the run game. You could take a shot at the defense. I don't know if you could say the top three receivers he had were working at the local Walmart. And Fuller and, and, and Cobb didn't play the whole season, obviously. So yeah. Yeah, there's a little bit of that. But Cooks played ev- almost every game. And then Deshaun made those guys, the back end of the guys look good, certainly, yes. I don't think anybody's forgotten that Deshaun is good. Um, Quincy Avery saying that's the best he's ever seen him throw the ball. Cool. That's air to Bruce Ellington at workouts, former Texan running back slash wide receiver. So, like, yeah, I'm sure he looks good in workouts. Like, if, that's what the QB coach is supposed to say. It wasn't the Walmart comment that made you sad? No. Because that made me sad. No, I mean, that made me sad Come for on. Chad Hanson and Kiki QT. You know? <laughs> guys are catching strays, man. I know, right? I, I mean, I get Quincy Avery's Deshaun's guy, but, like... Come on. He took an unnecessary shot at those guys. Yeah. And, and yeah, like that, that's, what, that's what the QB coach of Deshaun was supposed to say. He looks awesome. He's playing awesome. And also... The idea that, oh, he's throwing the ball as well as he's ever thrown it, it doesn't matter. He's, as you said, Cody, he's strong against air. Yeah. yeah. So, look, I, I, look, you don't need to tell me how good Deshaun is. I know how good Deshaun is. And in a quarterback-driven league, he's worth the price of whatever the Texans can get for him, hopefully at least three or more first-round picks. But that's a little low by Qu- Quincy Avery. But continue. What made you sad? Well, Palmer's the one that really made me sad. Jordan Palmer, Carson Palmer's brothers, worked with a ton of quarterbacks. Yeah, I feel bad for him, too. Having to live in Carson's shadow over all these years it does Jordan, make me kind of sad. Jordan's carved out a a nice little uh, a nice little business for himself, helping QBs get ready for the draft. And as Jake mentioned, um, Palmer helped Deshaun Watson get ready for the draft. And I don't know of the current status between Jordan Palmer and Deshaun Watson, but again, I know that Jordan helped him a ton 
get ready for the draft. And when I really, really started to think back to what Palmer said in 2017 when I talked to him on the radio, and then when he said what he said to Ryan Rossillo on the Ryan Rossillo podcast, that's when I was really like, damn, it really got me sad. Follow one up that I think he's <laughs> this year, and I don't even know what team he goes to. He's a top three MVP candidate this year, 100%. But people forget, this is one of the best players in the league with a chance to be the best. Deshaun is not a solid quarterback. He's not a guy who's had a good run. This is a gangster. The way he unites a room, the way that he shows up, the way he prepares, he's to this day has the best study habits. I did his draft training. He has the best study habits of anybody. And his, the way he prepares, he's not a baller. He's not a guy who runs around and makes plays. He is as sophisticated of a learner as I've been around. And I'm just, I don't, I don't even care what team he goes on. He's a top three MVP candidate for sure. So I got in my fan feelings after hearing that because I went down the road of how the hell did we get here? How'd you mess it up? Because what Palmer is saying is how pretty much every Texans fan thought about Deshaun Watson at the conclusion of the 2020 NFL season. They thought, well, damn, this season sucked. It wasn't all Deshaun's fault. He's a baller. He's really good. And then Palmer gives you sort of the behind the scenes thing of why it would continue to be good, why he would continue to get better, why he could be one of the greats in the NFL. And yeah, the off the field stuff has popped up and certainly changed our perception of Deshaun Watson. But damn, I did feel a little sad today. I think it finally hit me that that guy is that damn good. He ain't playing for the Texans anytime soon. And it may be a really long time before another guy like him walks through the door. And that's why, and I understand your sadness. So talk me off the sadness well, ledge. Well, I can't because this Deshaun Watson is that good. And I've said this before. And when we've argued with people that have tried to, like, you know, depict him and say, oh, he's not as good. You're not going to get what you want from him. It's nonsense, man. Yes, the legal situation is still uh, is still a factor here, and there needs to be settlements. There needs to be no criminal charges. But if we operate under the assumption that he is going to play football again, I think all three of us agree on that. I think all of us agree he's playing next year. And you heard his quarterback coach, Quincy Avery, say he's definitely playing in 2022. He is going to be one of the better players in the NFL for the next 10 years. He's 25 years old, now 26. His last full season, he led the NFL in passing. The only sadness I could walk you off of or make you feel a little better is that you just hope that Nick Casario maximizes the value, gets a, a, an insane amount of draft picks, and then hits on the picks and lays a foundation. Because the one thing I can say is Deshaun Watson was great in 2020, and the team sucked and they only won four games because of how bad everything else was around him. So you could be a great quarterback. Dan Marino never won a Super Bowl either. So, yes, getting a quarterback is a big piece to eventually winning a championship, but... You need to have other pieces, too, and the hope would be you nail this trade and you find the quarterback through a different route, whether it's in the draft next year, whether it maybe is Davis Mills, whether it's a trade we're not thinking about down the line. you got to get the trade right with Deshaun because that eventually will get you back on the right path if you execute it the right way. You're going to be sad. Yeah. Because I'm going to be sad. Yeah. And we're going to be sad together. Yeah, okay, good. I'm a little bit of a sports masochist. Uh Uh-huh. Sometimes enjoy torturing myself in sport. Multiple times over the last few months, I've gone and searched Deshaun Watson highlights on YouTube and just watched them and borderline cried at my house. Guy's awesome. He's the girlfriend who's super hot that you know you have to break up with. Like for a while, she was great. Everything was going really well. But then she started treating you like crap. She's cheating on you. She's giving you a bad reputation around the city. And you know that you have to break up with her. You might not really want to. You might want to try to do whatever you can to get her back and to keep the relationship going, but you know you have to break up with her. But knowing that, you know she's still going to be really hot. She's going to make some other dude really happy, and you're going to have to see it on social media. And you also know it might take you a while to find somebody as good as her again. It's the real-life comparison with the Texans and Deshaun Watson. So it's going to be sad. I mean, Jake's right. You can mitigate the sadness by getting a great return and hitting on the draft picks that you get in that return, but... The sadness is inevitable because this is a dude. took you nearly two decades to get a dude at franchise quarterback or at quarterback, and now he's gone. He's going to be playing somewhere else, and he's going to be somebody else's franchise quarterback. So I understand the sadness. Uh, Unfortunately, this whole city is going to be sad at various points over the next couple of years watching Deshaun play somewhere else. Yeah, that's that's, that's, – it it was today. It was really today that it really hit me because – the, the whole podcast was about the quarterbacks in 2022. It was about the draft class. 
It was about quarterback movement and where guys can go. We still have Mike Sando on. They were talking about all these different guys moving and this quarterback and that quarterback. And then it was just I was sitting there and I'd gone from the stairmaster to the to the uh, uh, treadmill because I just couldn't I couldn't focus as much as I wanted to. I was afraid I might tumble down the stairmaster, break my neck on accident. You could tumble down the treadmill too. That's true, but it's a lot it's a lot shorter fall to the ground off the treadmill than it's off the stairmaster. That's fair. And I was just like, damn! It hit me today, February twenty fifth, twenty twenty two. That cat ain't playing no more. That cat's gonna be playing for somebody else. And damn, I hope Jordan Palmer's wrong that he's not going to be a top three MVP candidate in 2022. It just bothers me, and I see it on the Twitch here. Oh, well, Deshaun puts up garbage time stats. It's like you didn't watch in 2020 when the Texans were in all these games, and it was because the rushing attack was 32nd in the NFL and the defense was 32nd in the NFL that he did have to throw. But it's not like they were meaningless stats. They were playing close games that the defense would fail and come up short. Look at the amount of close games the Texans played that year. They should have won more than four games with the year Deshaun had. J.J. Watt apologized to Deshaun Watson after the seven or after week 17 of the season in 2020 because of how just egregious it was that they wasted one of his great years. But forget 2020. Let's go back to 2018. 11 and five, his first full year as a starter. 2019, 10 and five, his first full year as a starter. He goes to the playoffs both those years. Goes to the Pro Bowl both those years. Pro Bowler all three of his years. Let's not pick apart Deshaun Watson's stats and what he is as a quarterback. Because before he wanted out and before the legal situation arised, every Texan fan was in love with Deshaun Watson and felt like they, when they got rid of Bill O'Brien, there was hope for this fan base because they had Deshaun. Let's not have revisionist history here and try and say he wasn't as good as what we're saying. The guy at his best is a top five quarterback yeah. in the sport. He's certainly in the top 10. He signed long term. He's 26 years old. And the Texans need to get a lot for him. I don't care about the legal situation. It's important. It is still a factor right now, but eventually this guy's going to play football again. And when that happens, it's not going to be for the Texans, and that's why they need to. They have to. They must get a huge return for this dude because that's the only chance you have of resetting the deck here and giving Nick Casario and company a chance to build up this roster. And resetting my football heart. Mm. You know what would really ease the Deshaun Watson pain? A little Wolverine Watt. Ah, there you go. <laughs> it wouldn't be totally the same thing, but it would hurt. It can, would help. Can you take your heart out of your body, blow on it, and then put it back in <laughs> like, like an N64 <laughs> cartridge? Maybe that'll reset it. Oh, man. Science says that you're not supposed to do that, but science lied. It always made the game work. Mm. Listen to the science, Cody. All right? 713-780-ESPN is the number. You can reach us on Twitter at Jake Asbin at Cody underscore Stutes at Brad Kellner. Make sure you follow at ESPN. Nine seven five.